There's a bunch of crazy stories written by the Brothers Grimm. And now you're gonna learn all about them, listening to the Brothers Grimm. Students and scholars, friends and relations, welcome to the Brothers Grimm podcast, where we have a frank discussion about the stories recorded by the Brothers Grimm in the early 1800s in Germany including this 36th story in the uh, the grimoire, as it were. My name is Phil. Ooh. And my name is Mike. Is that where the word grimoire comes from? I don't think so. I think it's a much older uh, Latin word, a, a book of spells. And Probably. maybe it's just a, a coincidence. But be a whole lot cooler if it was. Yeah, but <laughs> Mike, I'm delighted to be speaking with you. I know you've been quite ill. Thus, we I had to have. take a small break. Uh, yes. Pardon the to our listeners, I'm sorry we missed two weeks, but uh, but uh, how are you feeling? You're feeling better? I am definitely better. Yes. Um, however, okay. I'm on a I'm on an antibiotic that I have to take four times a day and it <laughs> smells oh. god awful. And despite having to take it four times a day, I have to smell the bottle every time I do it. It's like a car crash. I can't not do it. And every single time, four times a day, it's just horrifying. That's just it's so they're they're really pretty. It's like two different shades of green. It's called Keflex. Yeah. It's a pretty common one, but but yeah, like to the point where I I opened it the first time and just immediately went, oh my god, and Googled it <laughs> before putting any in my face. That's just like Keflex smell, and like the first result was like some government website is like, yeah, no, it's supposed to smell like cat urine. I don't think it smells like cat yeah. urine. I think it smells <laughs> like like a salami sandwich that's been in the sun for days. Um, but anyway, it's, yeah, it's just some sort of, some sort of mold. Right. And that's yeah. all that it is. That's what I am. Penicillin. What's it's, what's the thing it's like an anti penicillin. Yeah. That's, yeah. Penicillin is just, mold, I think. Right. Yeah. It's like, some, it's, it's, yeah. it's yeah. mold. We accidentally ate and uh, found out it's okay. Anyway. Anyway. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm delighted that you are feeling much better and I'm delighted you're back and I'm delighted we're doing this. Mike, would you be so kind to please take us through the plot of story number 36, The Wishing Table, The Gold Ass, and The Cudgel in the Sack? Nothing would make me happier. So, all right, buckle <laughs> up. This is a big one. So there's there's a tailor father. Uh, he, there's no mom in sight. He's got three sons, and he's got a goat. Uh, this is a very important goat. Times are lean, and they depend heavily on the goat's milk, pretty much all they have. So they, they baby it. Um, each day, the, it, uh, a son is tasked with taking the goat out to pasture to graze. First, it's the oldest one. So the oldest takes it out to, to the pasture to graze. When the day's over, the son asks the goat if it's eaten its fill, and it replies, I have eaten so much, not a leaf more I'll touch. Meh, meh. And the son takes it home <laughs> to the barn, all happy. Uh, and then the father goes in later that evening and asks the goat if it ate its fill, and it replies, Why should I be satisfied? Among the graves I leapt about. And found no leaves, so went without. Meh, meh. I should mention that it's the churchyard, not necessarily a pastor. Hence the graves. Sure. Anyway, the father gets yeah. angry at the apparent <laughs> mistreatment of the goat and uh, thrashes the the son soundly with a yardstick, driving him out of the house uh, forever. You can probably guess what's coming next. Rinse, repeat with the other two sons. Uh, the middle one takes the goat out. Same thing happens. Next time, the uh, the youngest son takes the goat out. Same thing happens. And now it's just the the old man alone with the goat. He says, all right, well, I can, I'll treat you. I'll treat you nicely. So he takes the goat out to feed all day, repeats the same verse. I've eaten so much, not a leaf more, I'll touch. Meh, meh. Takes it home and then asks it again, and it gives the same, why should I be satisfied? Among the graves I leap about and found no leaves, so went without. Meh, meh. <laughs> then he realizes he's been had. He's done oh, fucked no. up. Oh. <laughs> he's done <laughs> fucked up. This is a stupid goat. He trusted the goat. <laughs> ah, yeah, well, there's mistake number one. So in his rage, he he marks the goat by shaving her head uh, so that she'll never fool anyone again, or at least not an honest <laughs> tailor again. Uh, then drives her out by uh, beating her senseless with a horse whip. Uh, so now he's just all he's all alone, doesn't even have a goat. Meanwhile, we, we pivot to what the sons have been up to. Son number one, uh, he went and apprenticed himself to a carpenter uh, and, and learned the trade. Upon leaving this apprenticeship, uh, the master presents him with a humble little table. But when one says, set yourself, it magically covers itself with a tablecloth and bottomless roasted meats and wine and place setting. Uh, kid's like, oh, this is amazing. So he heads for home, 
you know, try and make make amends with his father. On the way, he stops at an inn, uh, whereupon he he feeds all the guests at the inn with this magic table. Everybody loves it, and you know, they all make merry and carouse into the night and fall asleep. The innkeeper, meanwhile, has watched this and covets the table. So after everyone falls asleep, he goes and swaps it with a regular table he has that looks just like it. Sure. Next morning, the carpenter. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Next morning, the carpenter leaves uh, unawares, thinks he still has his magic table. He arrives back home at his father's. Father's happy to see him, um, and even happier when the son explains the table. So they call all their friends and relatives for a feast. However, the table, of course, does nothing, and all the friends and relatives make fun of them and then go home disappointed and hungry. And sadly, the, the worst part is the tailor ha- disappointingly has to go back to tailoring. And the son goes off and gets a job with a, with a carpenter. Surprise, repeat with son number two. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's apprenticed himself to a miller. Uh, when he uh, finishes his education, he receives a donkey that spews gold pieces if you lay out a sheet and say brickle bit. <laughs> I don't know where that comes from. I looked it up too. I couldn't find anything, but, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, he, no surprise, stops at the same inn on the way home. Uh, the innkeeper spies him doing this trick in the barn. Um, that night swaps the donkey for a regular donkey. Son returns home, calls all the friends and relatives. Everybody goes home disappointed and empty handed and makes fun of them. Third son, meanwhile, he's apprenticed himself to a turner, which is a skilled position, so it took longer. He's been schooling the longest and has heard about the woes with the innkeeper from his brother's letters. Upon finishing, he's given a club and a sack, a cudgel, and is told that it attacks people of ill intent when you say, out of the sack, cudgel, just beats them senseless. He's like, well, well, this is pretty cool. Uh, So he heads to the inn and beats the innkeeper into trying to steal it while he feigns sleep. The innkeeper gets the holy hell beaten out of him, viciously beats him, (laughs) till he agrees to hand over the table and the donkey. There you go. Uh, So son three uh, returns home triumphant. They have a feast and gold for all the friends and relatives. And the father and the sons live happily ever after. And then, <laughs> and then we get a wonderful, grim, hard left turn where we get a, a multiple paragraph epilogue in parentheses about the goat and says, Hey, are we wondering about the goat? Uh, so it turns out the goat ran off. She was so ashamed of being bald. Uh, she hid in a fox's den. Fox comes home and sees the glowing eyes and is scared. So he runs off, tells a bear that he comes across. The bear tries to help, is also scared off. Uh, a bee decides to help, goes in, stings the goat on the bald head. The goat runs off in a fit, never to be seen again. The end. Yeah. <laughs> I think the goat's probably off with a uh, clever Elsie. It was a very similar ending there. <laughs> it's like, yeah, she was never seen again. Nobody knows where she is. We don't know. The first thing I wanted to mention even though the story was only like six pages. But when I got to the end and then they said, and what happened to the goat? Here's his adventure. My first thought was, <laughs> oh, right. I forgot about the fucking goat. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's not uncommon in Grimm to never hear anything about the goat or the father or it's, the parents who sold the child or whatever. Going back, yeah. Grimm is so in the moment always. It's always moving forward. It so rarely goes back to anything. It, yeah, it, we, like there's, we ain't got there's time t- to go back. Yeah, there's like you, I, a lot of th- a lot of things finish. You you might you might close a loop, but if the loop is really small and somewhere else, like you know, okay, well now the goat's gone, so that's just the end of the goat. The goat left. That's its <laughs> right. story. That's it. It just had to get the characters into a certain position. Because you said you know here's this hard left turn is the the epilogue of the of the goat, but really it was there was already a hard left turn. There's this this little bit uh, you know when I first started reading. I was like, okay, the goats, because the goat bit was, it took a while. Yeah. To go through each of the sons and the goat to say his. Yeah, it was, it was like the and, first two and a half pages. <laughs> and then, and then suddenly goat's gone. And here's, here's like each of the sons doing a, a trade, trade labor and then earning a magic, whatever, you know, like the, the table or the, the sack. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was, sack. it was very funny to me. Um, to go back to the goat and just have that again realization after only I had I had not heard of this goat in three pages and I had already forgotten about the goat that might yeah that, yeah. that might be partially to do with my ADHD but also I've been trained now by Grimm to not expect this goat to ever come back right yeah I mean you're it's weird to to have it come back <laughs> although honestly what threw me as a a stickler for writing style and grammar and things like that and also as a, a programmer i saw the open parentheses and then just paragraphs and paragraphs and i started to get like just get uncomfortable 
<laughs> I guess just it's. I need to see the. I need. I need to see the the closing parentheses. We need to close this parentheses, bro. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> just. I can't pay attention to what's happening because. Or the code's not going to work. <laughs> just hanging. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take me forever. To, it's going to take me forever to find that open paragraph. Do you have a moral? Ah, uh, it's so. I mean, there's there's a lot going on here. I think don't try. Don't trust the fucking goat. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that, yeah, okay, don't trust a goat. Although, like, I don't blame the goat. The goat might have been, like, a parrot. The You know? <laughs> yeah. It, like, it actually, just, so it says the same thing every time, even though only the first son takes it to the churchyard. But yeah. every, every time it says something about, like, you know, jumping around the graves. Uh, so if the, if the father paid even a modicum of attention, or, you know, paid a you know, listen to the sons, uh, he would have figured it out. Sons didn't even try and defend themselves. I don't That's think true. They, just, they, yeah. just got, they got beat and they were like, well, well screw you, old man. <laughs> yeah, he just he runs this house with an iron fist. Yeah. They were they've been ready, wanting to leave for a while. Stupid dad hanging out with yeah. him, just won't shut up about his goat. <laughs> and he I talks just, about it at the end too. He's you know, like doesn't he? He's like, Oh, I brought you your magic table. I would have liked a goat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like he he drives to all the three sons away and then finds out that the goats the goat sucks and he's fucked up. And then when the first son comes back, he's like, what'd you bring me? And he's like, oh, I've got this table. He's like, it's not a very good table. So it's a, it's table <laughs> and then finds out sucks. that it's magic. And then like, <laughs> yeah, like the donkey, donkey, he brings the donkey and he's like, well, you know, a goat would have been. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. He was, says, yeah. he says there are asses <laughs> enough here, <laughs> <laughs> which was awesome. I got plenty of ass. I don't need any more of this. <laughs> yeah. And then like, yeah, the cudgel in the sack. He's like, you can get a cudgel off of any tree. Uh, like yeah, so he I, he's he's still he's still kind of a dick. Yeah. Oh, he's you no know, super dick. But you know, that's you know, he's the patriarch. It's fine. Yeah. Don't trust liars and thieves. I guess if you want to call the goat a liar, I kind of yeah. I kind of looked at the goat as not even being malicious. Right. Which yeah, is it's just, yeah, it's just a goat. <laughs> it's just too bad. It's yeah. It's a goat. I've had goats. I've owned goats before. Terribly dumb. Mean. Maybe <laughs> a little bit vicious. <laughs> Sometimes. I, come charging at you but um but not liars i don't think but that said uh yeah the thieves and the, the innkeeper with you know i don't and yeah i guess don't show off in front of strangers yes you, you know your your sort of uh not your treasure that's not the right word but your your wealth yeah they might just get a little jealous although the the way it's told the third son is intentionally vague in order to build suspense for the innkeeper to, to really intrigue him and make him go after after the the sack after he thinks that the the kid's asleep. The third son then did he knew that he knew that the the innkeeper was yeah stealing shit. yeah no he had gotten letters from the brothers. Oh, okay, I mean, so like obviously so apparently the the brothers know that the innkeeper did this. I don't know why they didn't just go try to rectify it themselves. But yeah, no, he he laid the trap. He he went to the innkeeper specifically because he's like, oh, yeah. I can, I've got the perfect thing. It's a stick that beats people to death. Yeah. <laughs> There's two ATU types for this, which is why, again, we, we talked about like classic grim hard turns. ATU 563 is the table, the ass and the stick. And number 212 is the lying goat. A lying goat. <laughs> which so, yeah, maybe... <laughs> <laughs> maybe he was a liar uh, this whole time but more i think yeah like but it is just yeah two very different stories snapped together with like uh well there's three brothers in this story and there's three brothers in the lying goat so what if they were the same three brothers mm, yeah so uh, it was it was neat looking at kind of the like a lot of the other stories that you know were were part of e either part of the atu types or, or were inspired this when i was doing like my research in that like there was very few of them that had both parts together oh really there a, yeah there was a lot of like here's here's some stories about like a, a lying animal and here's some but especially there was like here's some stories about the table the ass and the stick yeah I'd, I'd seen there's a bunch of those but i didn't realize it was that sparse to have the two together yeah the like the yeah the magic cane the gold donkey and the little stick that hits and then uh was uh, an Italian story. The Netherlands had Silly Jan and his brothers by a guy named Wailing Dykstra. I thought was a really funny name. It's not a bad name. <laughs> I had one question. I thought, where, where is the gold coming from? It's, <laughs> it's in the donkey. I know. I guess it comes from his mouth, but I was like, it's just it does. And I, I, saw, I saw pictures like, you know, like wood carvings and things of like, it's the donkey just like everybody's hooting and hollering and the donkey's just like, uncomfortably vomiting gold onto a tablecloth. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw there's, I saw one 
translation or version where it, it so you, you know he takes the regular donkey home by mistake and it, you know they call the friends and relatives and have a party and then something about how like <laughs> instead of gold it's just regular donkey droppings <laughs> and the father was very disappointed <laughs> it's fucking ass <laughs> shat all over the living room <laughs> Did when did any of you did any of you go for an apprenticeship with a shoveler? Because this is a big pile of shit. You got to get it out of here, man. I, I don't want this in my living room. Knew I should have had a fourth son. Should have gotten like another goat. <laughs> What's the deal too? With like he's like I'll I'll teach this goat a lesson. He'll never forget. I thought he shaves his head. He's like that'll that was teach him. really then, weird. I'll, and then all he's like, and so you won't be able to fool a tailor again because, like, I guess there's some unwritten rule there, like, oh, you know, like amongst tailors about goats with shaved yeah. heads. Beware the, the shaved goat. Beware. <laughs> but only only if you shave its head. Right. Yeah. Which is the other weird part, like, <laughs> shave the rest of it. It makes sense to have a goat. <laughs> Angora makes delightful sweaters. There's lots of things you could do with, like, goat, uh, not fur, but whatever the <laughs> hair. Yeah. Do you have any other questions? No, I, I mean we were talking about the sort of the commonality of this. I, it's funny I've never heard a version of this, uh, but it's it's apparently very common across you know st- you know fairy tale collections across Europe and Asia. Apparently going back to sixth century China. Oh wow! Like like Buddhist uh, sort of you know allegories or legends or whatever they are. The three gifts kind of idea. Yeah, yeah. Which I mean that could even go back to. Uh, not to not to get all Jesusy on you, but um, myrrh, gold, and uh, frankincense. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Just as as the idea. I mean, I know that there wasn't specifically magic, but um, in its own ways, they were. Yeah. Um, I I saw a, a reference also that was talking about how the the gifts are representative. Um, but you know, the the first one with the the wishing table is its temporary wealth. You know, it's 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 okay. there. It's there when you need it, and the the gold ass is permanent wealth, and then the cudgel huh. in the sack is protection of the of the first two. Wow, oh, that's really neat. Yeah, and I'm, yeah. I, I don't know what it what it means beyond that, but I mean either. But I, I find that like interesting. yeah, it's a it's a way to look at it. I saw an interesting variant uh, as I was I was going through and reading things um, while I was <laughs> waiting waiting for you to to get get well not be so sick <laughs> it was an italian variant called the north winds gift where uh, a starving farmer goes to the north wind that destroys his crops and receives a box producing food but then the like the church takes it you know he the guy goes and begs the wind again he receives a golden box uh which only works for a starving person uh so when you open the box thugs with clubs come out <laughs> so <laughs> so but um, yeah, the, he goes and he trades. To, he goes back to the church, and they're like, "Oh, you got another treasure box? Oh, well, we'll see about that. <laughs> You'll have to trade us." And he's like, uh, "Okay." And then um, <laughs> he opens the box, and just the all these thugs with with gloves come out and beat the shit out of the clergy members. <laughs> well, it's very he, Italian. <laughs> it's a very Italian. It, it's very weird. I that one cracked me up. <laughs> he's like. Uh, you better give me that new box. He's like, are you sure? You shouldn't You <laughs> want to invite a couple more priests over? Okay. <laughs> yeah, gather everybody around. Yeah, okay, yeah, but only the priests, though. <laughs> you, you, you jerk. There was also, there was an English one I liked, which I was kind of, I thought might might make for a, an interesting, like, movie pitch if I wanted to to do something. So, like, kind of a, a, a fairy tale version uh, animated of The Bachelor. But for like YA, for for young adults, for your kids listening, okay. <laughs> Where he's the, he's the bachelor, and he's got all this magic stuff, and then um, so the, the, like the English the English one called Jack's Luck, the ass, the table, and the stick. Oh, um, I think I did come across this. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I mean it's it's basically the same story, but it's a uh, yeah the the poor youth Jack works for an old lady, and she gives him a- after. I don't know if she dies or whatever. The she gives him the donkey that produces the silver and gold for saying brickle bread or whatever. And a, a self-setting table. The, then the magic stick as well. You know, like to that that can beat up anyone. So so then like in that story, he goes back to town and he he does uh 
He's the richest man in his village. He invites all the single ladies over to choose his future bride and then ends up picking his childhood crush. You know, who, he, who, who is poor? Who's only, poor? Yeah. Like they all, they all show up with gold and silver and he's like, oh, I've got all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, you read it then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, fun little story. And I, that one kind of made me think I was like, okay, like that's, that's my, it's, it's a really undeveloped pitch, but <laughs> <laughs> animated oh, but, bachelor for, uh, for, for kids. So kind of buried, jokey. You buried the lead. Okay. He picks the, he picks the poor girl who was, who was his crush when he was a kid and then six, the stick on it to, to beat the shit out of all the other, all the other maidens. <laughs> I forgot about that. And I'm not making that up. That was part of the story. That did. That was part of the story. Yeah. And her also, uh, like after she's so happy that she was chosen when she cries, it turns out her tears were diamonds the whole time. So she was, she wasn't poor at all. You know, if Um, only I'd known. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Jack six, the stick on the other girls. (laughs) Yeah. I got got the stick. I got to do something with it. That kind of turns, that could also turn it into a slightly, uh, uh, older adult age story, <laughs> a sort of uh, I have this magic cat of nine tails. Yeah, Sallow or the one hundred twenty days of Sodom. I have it, never heard of this. It's a movie. It was uh, based on an unfinished novel uh, by a French writer, and it describes the activities of four wealthy Frenchmen who spend four months. They they kidnap a bunch of teenagers, and then spend four months just banging the hell out of them and each other and until they're dead until they're yeah until they're all dead um <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm looking at it now it's described as a it's an italian it's a 1975 italian art horror film yeah which is that tells you everything you need to know it's <laughs> <laughs> i was watching i was like i'm you know what i'm good i'm just gonna <laughs> i couldn't get through it <laughs> but um but uh yeah. Anyways, it's, that is if we wanted to go a little more adult with, with it. But I don't necessarily think that I want to do that. I think a a animated YA Bachelor would be very funny. <laughs> I'm, I'm still reading about this movie. I gotta you go find to... a copy. <laughs> this is so messed up. Signor Maggi, a coprophiliac who finds no shame in mooning others or even defecating in front of them, committed matricide for noblemen. Tells stories during the circle of shit. I mean, no, no spoilers, but this, yeah. <laughs> this sounds amazing. <laughs> and the orgy takes place from November 1st to 28th of February. And then, Damn. yeah, they do. And there's storytelling. It's yeah, it's it's a bonkers thing. I don't know if we can work the 120 <laughs> days of Sodom <laughs> into this. I don't know how we can necessarily turn it right back around. But um, I guess I guess. Yeah, there's. Uh, <laughs> Good food, good friends, uh, a donkey that <laughs> too many asses in the neighborhood, a donkey that shoots gold out of its butt and uh, <laughs> and a stick for uh, uh, beating on. Oh, whoever you might want to beat on. Yeah, I think that then brings us to the end <laughs> of story number 36, the wishing table, the gold ass and the cudgel in the sack. Sleep tight and we will see you next time. See ya. See ya.